Ms. Wilcher, if you would like to take the helm. Thank you, and good afternoon. <laughs> Just to know that somebody's there and, and listening. Uh, thank you very much for the invitation uh, to speak today. Um, I, uh, as has been indicated, was uh, head of the Office of Federal Contract Compliance Programs, uh, which enforces President Lyndon Johnson's Executive Order 11246. And for those of you that are not familiar with the executive order, it re requires equal opportunity and affirmative action to promote equal opportunity by federal contractors. Those that have contracts of over $10,000 or more have to not discriminate and use affirmative action. Those with contracts of $50,000 or more and 50 employees have to have a, a written affirmative action program. And I was there for nearly seven years. In taking a look at the um, Obama administration and affirmative action, I think it's fairly clear that affirmative action is alive and well, uh, and was not retired, by the way, <laughs> during the previous administration, particularly as it relates to the executive order program and, and a few others. I think that that position is reflected not only in, in policy statements, and uh, if I recall in, in checking the president did to also talk about the fact that the Supreme Court is moving the ball, and it did, he, did, he indicated that um, notwithstanding the Ritchie, de Ritchie decision, white firefighters case, it still allows for employers and educators to take race into account in hiring, promotions, admissions. He also noted that crude quotas are not, are unnecessarily are unnecessarily and constitutionally impermissible, but he did think that there were still circumstances in which a college admissions uh, officer or, or in a hiring decision, race could be taken into account, particularly as it relates to past discrimination or taking um, or related to issues of diversity in a workforce or a student body. He thinks that's still appropriate as he understood uh, the Ritchie decision. Um, there's also, by the way, an interview that George Stephanopoulos did as, uh, while he was a candidate that addresses issues of not only race but um, social and economic disadvantage, and that's led to a lot of discussion about whether the president actually wants to replace considerations of race with economic disadvantage. Um, I think that's incorrect to go that far, but that doesn't mean that one cannot do both, and I have to happen to be a supporter of that. Looking at the administration's proposals on budget uh, and staffing to me also reflects what its um, priorities are and that affirmative action programs, and I'll by say that by extension, equal opportunity programs are um, given high regard. In fact, at my former agency, the Office of Federal Contract Compliance Programs, the, the uh, President and the Secretary of Labor have, have, have done an, a remarkable thing. They have promoted uh, my old job to reporting now to the Secretary of Labor. I think that's probably the first time that's happened in the history of the contract compliance program. So now uh, she, the person who's there, Patricia Shu, who is an attorney from San Francisco, will be Director Shu, um, and again reports to the Secretary. I think that indicates a lot about the restoration of the program. I suspect the words affirmative action will be used again. Uh, as, as they were not in the past eight years, but also the administration has proposed an increase of more than two th 200 FTEs or staff, which during the previous administration, the staffing had gone down to under 600. Why is that a problem? Because the contract compliance program covers roughly a quarter of the civilian labor force. You can't man uh, administer any kind of program with such a small number of staff. But even with increasing the staffing, again, one would urge while I'm here that self-analysis was really the whole idea anyway, and not uh, strong uh, enforcement in terms of going on site. There simply aren't enough resources for that. Uh, I understand that this administration will also, at the department, focus on veterans and disability issues. Uh, and there are, as you know, two laws that require affirmative action for veterans, one for veterans and one for people with disabilities. And I strongly suggest those of you who represent federal contractors take a close look at your VETS programs 
and your disability programs, but also look at your compensation programs, because I understand that they're going to look at equal pay issues too. A couple more minutes. <laughs> Time. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, so again, let's look at the, the budget priorities, the policy priorities. They will continue to focus on systemic, but I don't systemic discrimination. But I don't know to what extent they're going to revise the the, the guidelines that were um, uh, handed down during the previous administration. They are also going to take a look at contractors receiving monies under the American Recovery and Reconstruction Act. Federal contractors, construction and non-construction, uh, should take advantage of the compliance assistance that's being provided uh, and it's being posted on the website because I strongly believe that once the new staff is in place and a lot of training takes place, you're going to see a lot more construction compliance reviews. Uh, so I think it's clear that discrimination and affirmative action issues will be um, highlighted in that administration. But also at the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, uh, this administration has recommend, recommended a substantial increase in its budget and more than 140 more staff. And it's noted on its website that it will, obviously it has got the re responsibility to enforce the Americans with Disabilities Act amendments as well as the Genetic um, Information on Discrimination Act. And there's no indication that that's going to be minimized. But also, there is, again, an interest in systemic discrimination. So those of you who are focusing on the EEOC, it'll be interesting to see what they do with systemic. And as you know, Jackie Berrien uh, was nominated uh, as chair of the EEOC, and she comes out of the NAACP Legal Defense Fund, uh, one of those left-wing organizations that I think you're familiar with. Um, there are other issues. The Department of Justice, Tom Perez, has been confirmed as the Assistant Attorney General and has been written uh, quite in quite a few places. There's going to be a return to the status quo ante 2001, focusing on equal uh, uh, opportunity as it relates and non-discrimination as it relates to housing, um, employment, and, and other issues. Also a focus on racial profiling and hate crimes. Uh, and of course, after the 2010 census, there will be an interest and an emphasis on um, redistricting issues. What does this all say in terms of the, the perspective of the, of the administration on affirmative action? As reflected in its budget priorities, I think it it's certainly stands strong. As reflected by the elevation of the agency that is primarily responsible for enforcing affirmative action laws, that is a major statement. I understand also, by the way, with respect to SBA and 8A programs, that there are regulations uh, afoot to strengthen the programs as well and to define what, what it means to be disadvantaged. I don't see a, a backing away from that issue. I don't see the, 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 the definition of affirmative action being watered down or changed as it relates to economic uh, opportunity, although certainly there is an, an, an interest in that. Um, and as it relates to judicial appointments, one last point. I am delighted at the President's decision to nominate and the confirmation of Sonia Sotomayor. To me, she reflects, she embodies the spirit of affirmative action. She was given an opportunity, she was smart, and she took that opportunity and ran with it, graduating with highest honors in, 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 in college. And I have to say, I graduated in 69 from high school. I couldn't get into Princeton because they wouldn't admit women. But a few years later, they did, and look what she did with her opportunity. That was the whole idea of affirmative action. The door opens, you walk through, nobody helps you take your exams. You do it, you work hard, and she is a primary example of what this is all about. She became a Supreme Court Justice. I feel kind of great about this because she's kind of in my co cohort. She, she graduated a few years later, but I embrace her as one of our sisters because I was at Mount Holyoke where we had two uh, uh, Latinas from part of New Yorkinos, <laughs> uh, New York Puerto Ricans, there were two of them. And so we all kind of hung together way back when because there were so few of us. And most of my colleagues from Mount Holyoke now are physicians and lawyers. To me, that's what affirmative action was all about. And I am so pleased that the president understood that and, and made the, that effort that, has, that will change, I believe, the face of the court uh, for, from, for, time, from, for some time to come. Thank you very much, and I will answer any questions. Thank mm -hmm. you.